Okay, so this is uh, the lecture for week number five. Today we are talking about simplifying logic circuits. So this is fairly complex. This is getting into a lot of Boolean algebra uh, and a bunch of rules that go along with that. So specifically we're going to be talking about uh, min terms and sum of products, max terms and product of sums, De Morgan's theorems, and Carnot maps, and how all of these things can be used to simplify your digital logic circuits. So starting off, we're going to talk about the sum of products uh, and a min term. So a min term, if you have a, uh, a truth table for a circuit, the min terms are any expressions that will yield a one as a result. So any combination of inputs that will do that. So in this case here, we can say that this one here, where we have the 0, 1, 1, yields a 1. So what we would say is that a bar bc gives a 1. So a bar bc is a min term of this total expression. Okay, because that combination of inputs gives us a 1 as a result. So the entire Boolean expression for this truth table is basically the sum of products, or basically the sum, or added, adding together all of the combinations that will give us uh, a possibility of a 1 as a result. So if we look here, there are three different combinations for that, here, here, and here. And we look at what those are. So we have A bar B C, A B bar C bar, and A B C all give us a 1. Those are the combinations of inputs. So this entire expression here, we would say this is our Boolean expression for this truth table or this circuit. And that is the sum of products expression for that, uh, for this truth table. Now what we can say here is that uh, you'll see each, we say sum of products because we have three different chunks here that are all anded together. So they are products because we're going to call it a product when we have an and. And it is the sum of these products because we have an or or a plus symbol between each of these products. So when we look for combinations that give us ones, we call those our min terms. And then combining those together gives us our sum of products. Now the opposite of that is to you can come up with the same formula or the same equation by doing a product of sums. And for this one, we look for the max terms. So here, what we're doing is getting anything that gives us a zero in the truth table. And what we'll do there is we'll say ABC gives us a zero. Here, ABC, that combination gives us a zero. So what we say is A or B or C is a max term. So these things with a plus between them is a max term that gives us a zero. And we can make a total expression. Well, if we grab all of the things that give us a zero, and this is going to be a, pr a product of sums. The other one was a sum of products. This one is a product of sums because each individual term here, or each individual input, is added or or ORed together. And then these final expressions here are multiplied together. You'll see that here. So we have what gives us a 0? We have an A, a B, and a C gives us a 0. And we have the opposite states of these. So a bar, B bar, C are zeros. That would be our second term here, our second max term. 
and then we basically take these and we multiply them together or do a boolean and of these and that gives us our product of sums and that is another way we can do the same expression uh, for a truth table like this okay so that's two kind of concepts there we won't really get into this too much just understand what we're talking about here what we will use a lot in simplifying expressions is what we're going to call De Morgan's theorems uh, specifically this one here and a couple of these but there are 12 laws that we will use for working with boolean expressions so we're going to go through each of these and do a little explanation of them and then talk about uh, which ones are the key ones that we're going to be using a lot here so some of these are very straightforward so the first one here the law of identity that is just saying that a is equal to a a bar is equal to a bar very straightforward basically just uh, any term or any kind type of input you would have is equal to that uh, that term that is the identity law the cumulative law uh, this says that AB is the same as BA or A or B is equal to B or A. Okay, so if we look at that in our logic terms, we're basically saying that this, it doesn't matter if you can express this like this either way of those is equal okay that's what that's basically saying it doesn't matter which order these go in it's the same thing that is the cumulative law the associative law this is saying if you have brackets so if you change the order this way Okay, and then the same thing with that's saying this. So basically, if you have That is the same as that is the same as that. Okay, that's what we're getting at there. It doesn't matter the order that you and these things in. You can do them as a two and a one or as a three. These are basically saying this is the same thing. Okay, so that doesn't matter. So you can manipulate things around and it won't change the, the result. this one okay this is where we start to get a little bit interesting this is saying a anded with a is going to give you a or a ord with a will also give you a so let's look at this here So if this is 1 and 1, our result here is going to be 1. If this is 0 and 0, our result here will be 0. So this is basically saying, if these are both the same, you will always get that same result out. Same with an OR. We have a one and a one that will always yield a one or if that's a zero and a zero that will always yield a zero okay that's what we're saying there the double negative law 
If you have two bars over something, they cancel each other out. So if you have A, you go through a negative, and you go through another negative, this here, that is A bar, go through another negative, that is A double bar. If we have a 1, this becomes a 0, this becomes a 1, go back to A. If this started as a 0, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 0, we always come back to where we started with a double negative. So basically if you have, you can basically just cancel that double bar out. Okay, that is the double negative law. The complementary law. An input anded with its inverse will give you a zero. An input or with its complement will give you a one. So if we do this, let's put a 1 here, that gives us a 1, let's run a 1 through this inverter, that's going to give us a 0 here, a 1 and a 0 gives us a 0, let's do this the other way, we put a 0 here, that's going to give us a 0, go down here, that gives us a 1 here, 0 and a 1, it's going to give us a 0. Let's flip that around, let's go an OR gate. Let's say we get a 1. That gives us a 1. That will give us a 1 here. That gives us a 0. A 1 or a 0 will yield us a 1. Let's change this to a 0. Give us a 0. A 0 here. This will now become a 1. A 0 or a 1 gives us a 1. Okay? So anything anded with its complement gives us a 0. Anything ORed with its complement always gives us a 1. Law of intersection. A anded with a 1. Will always yield a. A added with zero always yields zero. Fairly straightforward. If this is a zero, zero and one gives a zero. If this is a one, one and a zero gives a one. So basically whatever we put in is what we get out. Got the same thing here. Now this is a 1. It doesn't matter what we put into it. We're always going to get a 0 out. Because you need both inputs to be 1s. And you'll never have that situation here. As long as one of the inputs is a 0. Okay, so that's always going to give us a 0. This will always give us whatever we put into it. The law of union. This is the same thing but with ORs. Doesn't matter what this is, if it's a zero, zero and a one, give us a one. If it's a one, one and a one, give us a one. You're always going to get a one with that. 
this one here. If A is a 1, we get a 1 over here. If A is a 0, you'll get a 0 over here. So this always depends on what you put into it. What you get out will be the same as what you put in. That is the law of union. And then De Morgan's theorems. You can't draw an example of this uh, simply, but basically what this says, and we'll use this a lot, if you have something with a bar over top of it, in this case, we have uh, the AND operator here. You can get rid of this bar. What you're allowed to do, that is the same as breaking that bar into two individual bars and changing the operator. Okay? Same thing as if you have this. Break the bar and change the operator. Okay, we will use this one a lot. This is De Morgan's theorem. The distributive law. This looks a lot like regular math. Okay, so that just looks like breaking that open. The second one here is kind of weird. Okay. Law of absorption. We won't use that one very much. And common identities. Probably if I was asking you to do some of these, I would give you a lot of these rules written out. I'll give you a hand. So two theorems we're going to use commonly. The De Morgan's theorems here. So remember this. De Morgan's theorems. Break this. Change this. Break. Change. And then other ones. This one here. Double bar. Uh, this one's the distributive, I think. And then these ones here. Uh, I forget what these ones are called, but we'll use these ones quite a bit as well. So why do we need to know these things? So the basic answer is we can simplify a lot of the uh, circuits that we are doing because we don't want to try to wire a circuit we want to try to wire a circuit in the most simple way that we can because it takes less wiring less chips less chance for mistakes so in lab number four we have some fairly complex circuits 
but the expressions for them are actually not very complex if you can simplify them. So for example, this is lab number four, part B, I believe. Now looking at this, we have uh, three inverters and an AND gate. But what we find out when we actually go through the truth table of this, as you'll do this week in the lab, when you create the truth table, it turns out like this. Now, if you can recognize this truth table, this is actually the truth table of an OR gate. But this doesn't look like an OR gate. Okay, but we basically created a circuit for an OR gate. So really, we could wire this circuit just as this instead. But how do we know that, that is the case? Well, let's look at this here. So we have coming in here, we have A and B. Now we flip those, we get A, A bar, sorry, A bar, B bar. We add those two things together, so we get A bar added with B bar. And then we take that and we flip it again, so we get A bar and B bar all with an AND over it. Now we know by using De Morgan's theorems A bar and B bar all with an AND. We can take this and we know that there's a rule we're allowed to change this sign and break that bar, right? We can break this here. We can break that if we change this sign because that encompasses both of these. We can break that and then we know we now have a double bar over each of these. A double bar we're allowed to just cancel and that leaves us with a plus B. So we've basically just shown that we can simplify that whole circuit down to just this. And that we know how to wire very simply. That is just an OR gate. Okay, so that is simplifying circuit, lab circuit 4B. Lab 4C, much more complicated. We work through this. We have input A, input B, input C as well. So over here we have AB bar. Here we have A bar. Here we have B bar. Combine a bunch of things together. Here we have A, a bar, B bar, C, all of the bar over it. Our final result over here, we get this big ugly expression right here. So how can we simplify that one? It asks you to do this on the lab. So A, B, with a bar over it. A, B, C, bar, bar, bar over this, bar over everything. Let's remember this is a that symbol in there. If there's no symbol here, you imply that they're all and together. Okay, so let's break this down. So we've got a double bar. We got a, we have a bar that goes across everything, so we can break that there and change this. That now makes this a double bar. We get this. We cancel out double bars. We now have AB plus A bar B bar C. A 
Okay, a much simpler circuit. To wire. Okay, so we have this expression here as our final expression. Simpler to understand than this expression here. Okay, so when we talk about simplifying circuits using De Morgan's theorems, that's what we're talking about is going from this down to this. Another method of doing this is using what we call a K-map or Carnot map. Now this is a graphical way to do this. The way we do this, we take a truth table that we already have, and we make a little map for it, and then we're basically joining, uh, I believe we're finding all of the min terms for this. So this is kind of a roundabout way of doing the min terms. So look at this truth table here. This is a truth table of a uh, an OR gate, which we know in the end that will be our expression we should come up with. So what we do is we draw a table where we need to map out what are all of our possible inputs. So this is a two input. So we're going to have across the top we'll put all of our possible input combinations so we have we either have a bar or a so a can either be a zero or a one and we have b bar and b so we'll do this Now we put in, where do all of the ones fall in here? We only need to map the ones, not the zeros. So we get a one when we have, this would be A bar and this would be B. So A bar and B gets a one. And you can see this is drawing this arrow here. Uh, a and B bar gets a one. So A and B bar. It's a one, and A and B. It's a one. That's A. And that's B. In fact, it's a one. All right. So we do each of those. That's basically how we come up with this chart right here. Now, once we have that, what we want to do is we're actually going to group our ones together. So if you can make a draw a circle around your ones. That's what you want to do. So we can make a circle like this. That groups our ones together. I can also group like this. Okay, so I'm looking for common things that make groups of ones. If I don't do diagonals, uh, you only go horizontal or vertical. You're allowed to wrap around. If uh, if this was a larger uh, one, I can show you how we wrap around. Uh, but basically, once we do that, now what we're going to do is create an expression that indicates what these circles are. So, what for this blue circle here, what is common? What are the common terms between these circles? So, this definitely has A, because it's only in the A column. And then, does it have any common terms over here? It's A with B bar and B. So there's nothing common there. So it's just A. Just A. And we say OR. And then for the red one here, it's only in the B column. And is there any common terms with the A's? We have A bar and A, nothing common there. So it's just this. And this would be the expression we come up with from our K-map. All right, so when we collect all the terms together, we determine that our expression for this truth table is A plus B. All right, so that's using the K-map to come up with the expression. 
So let's try that on a larger scale. This is lab number five, which we'll do next week. Part A, you'll have to create this. So let's look at this. So here's all of our possible combinations. There's four inputs for this one. So down the side, we have the four different combinations of A's and B's. Across the top, we have the four different combinations of C's and D's. So let's map all of our ones. So we have this guy here. So this would be A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar. So that's this guy here. This one here, we have B bar, A, C, D. B bar, A, C, D. Whoops. B bar, A, C, D. This one is A, B bar, C, D bar. A, B bar, C, D bar. It's right there. This one, A, B bar, C, D. Sorry, this one was A bar B. We have A, B, C. D bar, A, B, C, D bar, and we have A, B, C, D, right there, okay, so we do that, now we need to collect our terms, right there, and we draw a big circle around these. So let's look at this group here. What are the common terms between this? So we have A bar being common. B is not common here. So this is one, this first one here is just A bar. And what's common here? C bar, D bar is common. Plus what's common over here? Just C, because D changes. What's common over here? B changes, just A. So this would be our expression. Okay, so that would be the expression for this truth table. Okay, so that is using the K-map to come up with the expression for a four-input truth table.